Hi there. In this video we will be taking a look at something that I would normally describe as really cool, but I think this is a little bit beyond cool. This is an oscilloscope. I kind of always wanted uh, to get my hands on one, but uh, I don't know how to use one. So it was a really complicated situation. Uh, I was quite sure it will help me troubleshoot things, but uh, would I learn well enough to use it uh, by myself or not? Well, uh, Big Tech kind of uh, solved uh, that uh, dilemma for me and they sent one in and it's the uh, coolest one, 1404. And uh, this thing is forcing me to learn how to use an uh, oscilloscope and uh, at the end of the day, I'm quite happy about uh, this, so let's get to it. During my frequent repairs, many times I've uh, had issues where a power supply was giving the correct voltage, but things were still not running properly, and I actually never knew is that voltage uh, steady enough for things to run on it or actually it is the good one but uh, it looks kind of like this so sensitive electronics will not run on that well uh, with this thingy we can know for sure exactly how it looks like we can also poke around in electronics uh, on uh, various uh, data channels and it's much, much easier to see what electronics are doing when you can simply check it and visually see it and measure it. So not possible with multimeters, but yeah, it will be a bit of a learning curve, but I'm willing to to do that. So thanks again, PicTech, for, uh, for sending this in and uh, making me start to learn how to use it. Let's see, do we have any more info? No, no more info. So let's get, oh, actually a little bit of it right here. Two channels, 8-bit, 7-inch uh, screen, quite a big screen. It's a USB device and host. Okay. Auto set, auto scale, zoom, cursor, okay. Matte mode, hmm. okay. FFT mode, okay, I guess. XY mode. We need to learn what those things mean. And as you can see, this is quite a slim multimeter. So on my tiny workbench right here, this is more than welcome. Let's get into the box. Oh, and it's even slimmer than I thought. USB cable, uh, connection cable, and again, it's a good quality cable. It's not one of those uh, cheap no names, no. You can see even from the injection of it. It looks good, no warpage, no uh, weirdness. Uh, all good, I like that. We have a C probe, okay. Yep, here we have the probes uh, on it. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. I have no clue, absolutely no clue how to use any of this, but I'm... Uh, I'm going to give this a try. And it's much, much, much thinner than I actually even thought it will be. So that uh, brings me a lot of joy because it will not occupy my work area uh, as you, a really uh, big one would. Look at this little guy. And look at this. So basically that's it. My hand is wider than it, so it's about three fingers wide. <laughs> we have here the power input, it seems USB connection, absolutely no clue what this is. Does look a bit like uh, US power plugs, but not the same size. USB input presumably, max power 15 watts, so it doesn't use a lot of power. Sampling rate, vertical resolution, and bandwidth. This is a cool thing. And are these actually adjustable? Hmm. 
let's get to this. I watched, I think, about three videos on how not to blow up your oscilloscope or your circuitry that you are trying to measure. Uh, the most important thing, uh, I will link those in the description and please watch them before touching an oscilloscope. This is the ground which should connect to the ground uh, on your uh, uh, circuitry in your house and that ground reaches uh, this point right here. Always. Yes, there is a way to use this uh, floating. Uh, there are uh, basically it's an adapter that uh, doesn't give you ground anymore. You plug it into something that doesn't have ground. But then, if you put uh, your probe onto something with uh, high potential, you might get zapped from <laughs> this. And uh, also, when using both channels at the same time, make sure both of them are connected. Uh, their uh, their grounds. Uh, maybe we should take a look at the the probes themselves. This is the ground. Uh, make sure it's connected to the same potential because if not, uh, you are basically short circuiting two things together. These things through the internals of the oscilloscope will be together. And if you uh, put them on different voltages, to say. Well, that kind of sucks uh, to be at that particular point in time. These are our little probes with this tiny and really cool hook on it. And as far as I know, I hope I'm not destroying anything. Uh, doesn't this come out? Maybe it doesn't. Okay, I'm not going to pull on it uh, before reading the manual. And for just a bit of edit safety, initially I'm just using one probe until I learn more about uh, the oscilloscope itself and uh, also I'm going to have uh, this one uh, covered like that but there are other things that are grounded like this so if I put camera are you maybe focused today if I put uh, this on what I shouldn't that potential will be here will be probably there somewhere not sure we'll see in the manual but uh, yeah, watch the videos that I put in the description. About this for the moment, carrying handle, quite nice. Let's see about this little fit because uh, I'm quite curious and for sure they are somehow adjustable, but I don't, ah, like that, okay. Ta -na -na. And now it's it can stay like this or like this. Obviously, this is the preferred way if you have enough room. And for our video, this is the way it will stay because uh, it looks better on camera and we can see better what we're doing. Let's go quickly through here. The calibration sheet. That's great. Okay, before putting this, because I think that's the first thing that you need to put the probe in and then power it on. It has two modes. 10x it can go to 600 volt, 1x up to 200 volt. But again, do not start uh, testing mains because you have a high chance of shorting this thing and popping your fuse. If not popping this wire, don't do that. Anyway, this is the selector for 10x. Or 1x. There's that. Let's put this little thing in here and presumably rotate it. And now we're latched. Although I think you can rotate this and still be latched. So this doesn't have to be uh, in any way. And what's in there? Can, when, can we actually poke something in there? Don't quote me, it seems to be a screw in there, maybe, don't know what it's for, but there's that. And you can also change these little plastics, the colors on them. As you can see here, we have more of those. And we also have this, which I have no clue at the moment what it is with these springs and 
Uh, I think this is for that little screw. Okay, -ish. yeah. Hopefully, we'll learn in the manual. Presumably, there are some instructions here. We'll see. Anyway, uh, next step: connect the power right here. And yes, even if you are using it floating, which you shouldn't, if you are connecting this to a computer to get uh, real-time data, the second you connect it to a desktop computer, you are giving it ground. Even to a laptop, most laptops actually get ground uh, through the power adapter. So uh, yeah, don't do that. Anyway. Let's connect this and get back to you in a second. And we are ready for the first power on. Hopefully we are not doing anything stupid. Big tech. Yeah, presumably I should remove uh, the protection on the screen itself. It is a bit tucked under the the screen but uh, the display itself is matte so it's much easier to read uh, than if we leave this protection on so uh, yeah off it goes Camera, are you focusing on something please yeah anyway both of them channel 1, channel 2. I think we can go just to channel 1. Oh no, we disable channel 1. Nope. I want to disable channel 2. And now we disabled channel 2. That's great. So, uh, let's see. What can we measure without reading the manual first? Which I highly recommend you do. Read the manual. But I want to try something simple and see if I can figure out without a manual. First thing, I'm going to play with this uh, adapter. It should be DC. We'll see how DC it actually is. Let's set it to 3 volts. That's more than enough for us. Polarity shouldn't uh, matter at this point. What I want to check, that none of the pins is actually grounded. Which I uh, actually expect none of them to be grounded, but uh, better safe than sorry. And the fly. Annoying me. So up until now nothing. Let's see the other one. Absolutely nothing. And it actually works. So it's good. In theory, I can connect to this without any chance uh, of uh, shorting anything because this is an insulated power supply so uh, let me see what i can unplug from the wall because i have lots of stuff into the wall and get back to you now hopefully we will not pop anything in theory this should be our negative but i i don't uh, count on it 100 percent because that power supply has a, a switch for the polarity so who knows on what it is now Let's see how we can get these two things together. And this is actually just uh, noise. Uh, so it's not powered on. Let's power it on. And now, let's see, we need to set a trigger somehow. Okay-ish. Trigger. Nope. Let's see scale. Okay. Do we have a zoom? What is this? Okay. Uh, well, life happened and I uh, had a bit of other things that I needed to solve. The doctors were kind of sick for a few days. 
it's the season, what can you do? Uh, and I'm back at this to play around with it off camera until I figure out a few things without the manual, like real man. Uh, and the first thing that I realized, I left the probe on X10. And that's not uh, a multiplication, that's a division. So instead of 3 volts, I was showing this about 0.3 volts. So uh, yeah, first error, let's switch to <laughs> x1 and uh, try everything once more and I will play with it and until I figure it uh, out better. So a bit later I figured out this is a frequency generator basically uh, and with that I managed to play a little bit with this. So what I understood basically it's clear. You set the trigger that where it gets a voltage, <clears throat> take all that I say with a, a huge amount of salt because I'm learning. I have no clue if what I say is correct or not. It's what I think I understood up until now. So yeah, you set the trigger to where this graph, the voltage gets above it. It has a trigger point, so it manages to get everything steady right there because if we go with the trigger right above it and you can see here uh, where the trigger is set uh, yeah crazy stuff starts to happen although weirdly enough this should be below but maybe there's still something Whew. let's see time this is the time scale We can move the middle a little bit, microseconds, depends on what you want, but I keep it in the middle for the moment, no point for me to move it. Uh, this is the voltage scale, it gives you here how much we have per one of these divisions, maximum is 50 volts. And we are going into really small stuff, but our graph is way bigger than that. Uh, from here we have a cursor that we can basically decide which of them we want to move. If I want to move A to measure something, for example. Okay, right there, it's superimposed. No, ah, missed it. I want to move B. Obviously, as you could see, I could move both of them if needed. So now the delta between them is 50 volts. Which is a bit weird because obviously on this is written 5 volts, but I'm in the X1 mode. So is X1 actually a multiplication and X10 is a direct? I understood that X10 is actually a division. Because if I go to X10, yeah, much smaller. And same measurement, 5 volts between A and B. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> it's still a bit weird to me. We will learn much, much more about this. Let's play with Autoset. Yeah, and it's telling us what uh, we want to see. If we want to see only one of these full uh, loops, if we want to see more of them, just one of the uh, jumps where we go high, where we go low. It's pretty cool, but uh, I have so much to learn about this thing. And obviously in the menu, uh, you set AC DC depending on what you're measuring it's yeah <laughs> and weirdly enough now we have a little bit of a, a German English combination in the menu so I need to search how can I change the language itself but yeah and obviously this is a pause and in utility yeah Uh, 
Ah, configuration. Eh, I missed it. So, how do I do this? Ah, configuration. Hey, no, get back. So, in configuration. Uh, English. I think I can hit OK. And let's see now English. Yeah, everything is in English now. Okay, coupling DC. Slope going up, down, hold off. I have no freaking clue what that is. Okay, <laughs> hold off, reset. Previous page. Channel 1 is the source, yes, because channel 2. Uh, why is channel 2 doing this? Okay, it's weird because there's nothing in there. It surely has a logic somewhere, but I don't know it yet. Utility again. No, I was in menu. Jesus. Mode auto normal. Okay, normal mode. What does normal mode actually mean? Yeah, I need to learn a lot. video wait what uh okay i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm going to have a lot of fun with this but uh, so much to learn vertical division so what's it basically doing Prop 10x. Oh, wait a second. Hey, how do I get out of this? Okay. Ah, you also set from here. Oopsie daisy. So you need to set your probe. So I need to go into 1x, then set my probe to 1x. And I think at this point we will have. Uh, huh. Finally, 5 volts, yeah, so it is generating 5 volts, but I had the probe set wrong from here. So when we, you switch on the probe, you need to also switch in here. It's a bit tricky, but this is quite a smart device. So uh, yeah, it is a bit of a learning curve compared to a simple multimeter to say like that. So so to say, actually, it's the, the saying. Uh, yeah, so when you press on this thing, Mm -hmm. Measuring cursor. Uh, switches from volts to amps. Ah, I think you can also have uh, an amp, uh, a current clamp, an amp probe. Not sure how. This is limit. It can invert the signal. Ground. DC. Ah, I think this is what I wanted. So channel one coupling DC. But is this different from coupling? Yes, because this is coupling for uh, trigger mode, because this is in trigger. So this is a different coupling. Okay, now I think I'm able to, to measure the voltage that I was inputting into this and uh, nothing seemed quite right. So let's see here, measure curve off. No, measure cursor, that's not curve. Jesus, but why am I on amps? That's weird. Let's see here. Cursor. Uh, I need a cursor. Voltage type. Voltage time. Ah, time and voltage. Oh, okay. Yeah, things are changing. Auto cursor voltage. But I think I want to disable the cursor. Yeah, from here. Okay, 
So now we have to, two volts per division and as you can see we are at uh, two and a half but now our trigger is not where it should be so we need to go with it higher so it stabilizes things. Yeah, now let's try to measure something. Okay, I finally think I figured it out. <laughs> part of it, a simple part of it. But anyway, I know how to measure DC now. Maybe in my own way. So with cursor uh, in here, for example, I can go with B until I superimpose it on this. More or less, now it's superimposed. And you can see uh, Y2 is actually B. So that means it's 3.8 volts up from the middle. So we have 3.8 volts. Yes, I could move also move A if... Uh, ah, damn it. I moved the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Uh, A. Let's set A to the middle. Come on. Move it, move it, move it. Go to the middle. I want it to be... Ah, I don't think I can make it directly on the... Ah, okay. So now I have... Uh, it shows me between A and B, we have 3.8 volts. <laughs> yeah. I don't think trigger can work on this because I realized this is not something, uh, I don't know, a normal uh, repetitive signal or something like that. It's just random junk. So, <laughs> yeah. What I can do here, I think, so let's get the signal a bit lower and get it higher so i'm sure uh, i think i got it low let's make it a bit bigger and get it lower in view and at this point i th think we can stop it at something and get the cursor out <clears throat> and lower big cursor up to here so we get the top of that more or less the spike. Eh, that's the spike. Let's see. A cursor. Get it on the lowest spike. Although I could just calculate because it's quite close to just two divisions. But yeah, something like that. Right. So there's a delta of one volt. So uh, yeah. This is not a good power supply, <laughs> at least not from what I understand uh, from this thing. So not a clean signal at all, no matter how you look at it. Disconnected this from uh, that stupid power supply. And if I touch this thing, uh, well, basically I become an antenna. <laughs> There's a saying uh, in Romanian, Mi-am prins urechile. I caught my ears. I'm sure it has uh, an equivalent in English. I do not know it. But uh, yeah, you kind of use this. Camera focus, please, today. You kind of use this saying when uh, something is way over your head. <laughs> anyway. This is a really cool tool. Honestly, for beginners, I think it's great. As you could see, I somewhat figured out a few of the things that can be done with this and even without a manual I think in time I would be able to decently use it at least for the repairs that I do not really intricate uh, stuff just want to know hey is the power supply giving a clean voltage is it not giving a, a clean voltage do I have a signal on a pin of uh, some chip don't I have a signal in there stuff like that uh, we obviously have a software for this because it's able to either save uh, the data that you are getting on a USB stick or output it directly to the computer through this thing. If you need it, I think this is the code of it. Yeah, I have fixed uh, uh, focus now. I don't think this helps you with anything, but hey, that's it. <laughs> So it's a USB that you plug, plug in the back of this, but be warned, even if you are floating this thing, when you plug this into a computer that is grounded, you're not floating it anymore. So you can zap your uh, 
oscilloscope or the board you are working on so be really careful i'm not going to use this on anything that doesn't have an um, insulated power supply from mains so basically something with a proper transformer i don't want to blow anything up watch the videos that i link in the description so this is the software for it quite cool i'm not going to go uh, into that in this video because it's way too long already and uh, i think this is our uh, 100 megahertz probes basically they <coughs> pumping in the phone and whatnot they match this little guy why that 100 megahertz value is important when i uh, when i did a bit of uh, digging online and the higher that value is the better you can obviously measure uh, high frequency uh, signals but in theory you will not be able to go as high as that value because this does work as a filter somewhat from what i understand so the amplitude will get lower the higher the frequency so it's better to have an oscilloscope with as high uh, as a value of a value as possible but you don't go to that value you stay lower than that and you are fine but as i took a look online at oscilloscopes this little guy is quite beefy so it's really specked up compared to uh, other cheaper oscilloscopes so this is for a beginner but in most cases i think even an intermediate could uh, use it without feeling it's missing absolutely anything I don't dare to say pro because I don't know exactly what pros uh, need from an oscilloscope. But hey, from for what I need, way, way plenty. And honestly, it's extremely small. It can stay on my workbench and not bother me at all. So that's a plus in my book. <clears throat> okay, this is the info. So we are in this model. I hate fixed focus, but it is what it is. So, and on one X it can go to 6 MHz, on 10 X it can go to 100 MHz, okay. Input resistance if you need it. Voltage, yep, lower than 200 volts on one X and on 10 X 600 volts. So it does, um, uh, it does divide the signal, Jesus, I, I could not uh, uh, find it. Anyway, voltage curve, there's that. And before taking in, uh, check the compensation of the probe. Generally, have a square wave. Okay, at the terminal. Yeah, I think it's that one. One kilohertz. So this is what we are getting. It's probably one kilohertz test, test signal. Set the probe to 10x. And if you have a camera, I was not pointing at the right thing. Something like that. You adjust it to get. Oh. So we can clean this thing up. Tiny screwdriver. Oh, are you seeing that? Yeah, that's quite nice. Tongue just at the right angle. I think this is the best that we will be able to get, which is great in my book. So, perfect. Uh, about these things, let's see. Does it say anything about it? Electrical contact ground, measuring tip. Okay ish i see tip okay uh, sorry but that's over my head so th those are ic tips and uh, elect electrical contact grounds but uh, too much for me sprung hook yep ground lead yep and mark a ring with different colors if you want to change them or need to change them if you have an oscilloscope with more than two 
uh, inputs our are blue and uh, yellow so our probes are blue and yellow which uh, kind of uh, makes sense yep so the probes are great and for the start obviously i'm going to be using just uh, 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 i cannot talk today one probe at a time i don't want to uh, connect them to a different potential by mistake because you need to have both these grounds to the same um, potential otherwise you will have a bit of fun with short circuiting because they do close inside of this from one to the other it's a short basically so channel one uh, probe 10 probe uh, ah this one one and hit it and now we can lower the signal just a tad bit nice okay let's uh, quickly look at the oscilloscope manual on PicTech website as you can see from this picture uh, it seems this can do way more than what I already did with it um, you can go down here to downloads and you have the driver you have the software and obviously you have the manual so let's open that up and uh, okay skip whatever you can go to demonstration directly and it will show you uh, how to do a few measurements and obviously it will give you much much more much more info than I could ever because I basically don't know what I'm talking about about uh, when dealing with uh, oscilloscopes. It's plain and simple. So yeah, this will be used more and more on the channel, and in time, hopefully, I will be able to to properly use it. But uh, it might take a while. So yeah, there's that. I was browsing through the manual, and it explains everything, and I mean everything that a beginner should know. Um, and it's so much simpler when you first use uh, this thing to read the manual but hey where's the fun in that <laughs> and yes obviously you can use uh, time cursor or time and voltage at the same time but if you oh and it also has auto cursor oh that's nice so it's kind of showing me that it's actually locked in there. It's properly locked on the line. I don't know, a bit too much for me. Sorry for that. It's just a bit too much for me. Anyway, but like this, I can see the signal. Exactly one kilohertz. Ta -na -na -na. So that's about it for this video. It was really fun to play with this. It will be really fine to actually be able to troubleshoot things properly from now on because this gives me a way to see what the voltage and current if you get uh, that sort of probe is actually doing because uh, those are kind of invisible things so you can only guess what's happening from uh, what you see a device uh, doing but uh, now you have a visual way to see that so yeah really good tool for uh, fixing stuff so overall cool and thank you very much PicTech for sending this in will be put to really good use uh, on the channel for uh, all of you feel free to ask in the comments whatever you need yes hopefully I will be able to help you uh, with my limited experience with something like this obviously if not others might uh, chip in and give you more advice uh, in the comments please give more advice if you know more about uh, these kind of tools and as always see you in the next video